All right, good morning, Chevra. Let's uh, let's do our Shir Yichu. This will be the last one because we started last week on Thursday. Uh, except we'll have to record the Shabbos one at some point, right? Maybe after we do this, we'll record the Shabbos one just f- so you have it, so you can use it in your own Shabbos table. You know, you can, uh, if you have it in a sitter or something or, or a bench or in, in the Satmar, they sing the Shir Yuchud for Shabbos after the Friday night meal, meaning by the Rebbe's Tish. Um, the Satmar Rav only really sang two Zmiras during the Friday night Suda and two Zmiras during the Shabbos day Suda. The current Satmar Rebbe's follow their father's Minig to sing a few more Zmiras. The, the, you know, meaning the old Satmar Rav only had Komakadesh and and Menucha uh, V'Simcha during the meal, you know, and, you know, Zamer B'Shvachin before the meal, of course, everything, all the stuff before the meal, but as far as, I think I might have gone too far, as far as what's uh, in the actual meal, it was those two, and then after benching, he sang Osmiya Mashvi. and so, uh, like I said, the High Tegas Zamer Rebbe, they, they do all that plus, they do a little more, they, they, they sing uh, Koribon, and they sing Koech Seif, and, uh, and then again, after, after benching, after the meal is over, they get up and they dance to Ozbi Yavashvi. So uh, it's a very special, you know, certainly. And uh, my Rebbe, the Kalav Rebbe, I remember, Shabbos day, I was at his home, and he, he uh, you know, during the meal, he sang Azbay um, Mashvi, and I remember other, my other Chatseras also, uh, that they sing Azbay Mashvi, so it's, uh, for Shabbos, that's a very normal thing, but for the weekdays, most, most places don't have it, like I said, uh, by the Shabbos day, Suda during Sfiris Omer is when in Satmar they say it. Uh, so that's that's just to it. But now, if we do this one now, we'll be all through it. This again, a very long one, but it's uh, it's very nice. And so then we'll have the whole thing recorded. I think it's the only recording on YouTube of all, uh, at least now the six. If we finish this one. The Shira Yichud, and then maybe we'll, we'll do maybe we'll do Asbiyah Mashvi. It's not that long. We'll do it after after we finish this. Again, I'm using the Litvish Havara because it's more shovel of Chol Nefesh. It's more common, more uh, closer to what more people are used to. But I'm singing this Sapper Nigan. Maybe we should do the Friday one again with the Sapper Nigan since we did it with Daniel Smiris Nigan. But anyway. Let's do this. Aroma melahe avivi eli, anvelo he tsuri vigoi hali, ayache delohe hashomayim, viha oritz mecholim pamayim, el chayachad hu varanu, avir yakov of mechulanu, adainenu adain koloritz, madirshim kabu koloritz. Ain ko el e shaykh la ve kana la ay la madino ya maselamu no ori vish bim ois hayoy i love to know him ko ma vayoy alohim amasu alohim khayim wa yakhilu za ma goyim yim adir va amet ko ya khra voinim elohe wa alohim vadune hu adonim alo ah I see she over Ali, I love the old Rai, Shimri Vitsi Lee, Bore Hoil, Yisrael, Goyel, Bore, Elohim, Elohe Yisrael, Bore Ruach, Horem Yoitzer, Memchamizima, Loye Botzer, Gayo Meshiv Mu Al Gayem, Al Haram, and Al Hussoim. 
Thank 
Kor Chagim Mikra Yisrael Oya Zayv Ki Uzi El Magen Yishiv Echerav Gavo L'Shem Chol Zich Chol Nefesh Tavo Magen Hu L'Chol Achoy Sim Boi Ashrei Adam Asher Oiz Lohi Boi Navar V'Naim Navar V'Naira Nedar V'Nezar Shmoi Begvura Neman Neitzach Yisrael V'Goy Aloi Lo Yishakir Ashrei Kol Chay Chay Loi Neitzach Yishur and Hoel Hanemon, Melo Havi Hudaloy Almohon, Nifla Alkola Nifloim, is Nase Alkol Hani Soim, Nik Dosh Vinaro, Tello Haikado, Shina Hoin, Miniskov, Adina Nisi, Nikiminator, Alchemo, Lutzara, Loy, Bob Ishmael Homa, Nebriadi Nibe Hiloi Neroi, Leroy Shivan Erlo Ragui, the Voroi. So I make a side, I didn't know, so I will be so I didn't know, so I didn't know, so I didn't know, so I didn't know, so I I'm <laughs> Dodi be twelve eyes, I'll kindly cross my other nights of eyes. Sadiq had an eye at Sur Tamim, and Tahadiad be to our lamim. Swa Hashemayim is Tahim Lois, Rafim, I'm the Mim Aloy. Kadesh will behold me naked to shows, Kito is Solos, Kadesh Michel says, Kayam Omen, Allah Hakaya, Marda are Mardishmai, <laughs> Mahmadim, Mishmatavam is Masukim Hamudim, Rishon Vachan, Lamad, Lamad, El Shaykhin Ad, Shalit Melech, Shamaya, Beholdor, Vadarle, and Namashabach, Maraimim, Hadar, Shaman Shumagain, Adi Noyohim, Shafit said a Kamash will give away him. Sagihaya, Flamets and Uhu, Yaskiv, Behaikai, Mikamaihu. Shloim ay shmoi ki shaloi shaloim ki daber al chasid av shaloim. Shem arinoi ahi asher ahi atay afish reim loi kakfir uch aryei shaday ma'ori malki ve'eli hallelujah shmoi. Nafshi halayli t'tamim aim yoish v'natayim hasarigim shloi shesoraim. Tishasa t'tabar aimam aim akshim t'tapol humam. Tamim drachech a takif mikol, tu chalavad chalasoi says koil, tu chalti vesivri vesik fosi, tavas nafshi u tishu kosi, elasi vesiv arti, ozi mim e, imi goichi vegoizi, tamim daimil, de ois echod, kol alavavois doresh yochav. Thank you so much for watching. Let's look a little bit about what we said here. There were some things that, uh, I mean, the whole thing, it's, it's incredible. And I, again, if you don't understand Hebrew, I encourage you <coughs> to look in the art scroll, Machser for Yom Kippur, either Ashkenaz or Svart, they both have it, after Marev, Yom Kippur night, Kol Nidre night, in English. It's an incredible and worthwhile, but... Interesting. He Koni Mirechi Mirechem. He was my. Usually, it's translated as maker, but really, it's more accurate to say my owner, uh, my acquirer from the womb. 
Mikane Lusain of he is zealous or jealous, a jealous God or a zealous God, it's the same word in Hebrew to those who hate him. Karen Yishi the curve of He is the horn of my salvation and close to those who call upon him. Again, we, we mentioned this before, Psalm 145, Karv Hashem of The Lord is close to all those who call upon him. All who call upon him in truth and honesty. So, again, it's that dichotomy of God's imminence and his. Uh, I forget, again, there's a good English word for far away. Of, this is uh, his. that he's far away, that he's close and far simultaneously because he's he fills all worlds and surrounds all worlds. So he he's close to those who call upon him, but also Rochak Mikol, also far from everybody, but as Kolroya, meaning far from everybody in the sense that there's nothing that he's like. It, he's far away from any kind of definition. You know, to even to call God God. All right, so we make it with a capital G, but we use that same word with lowercase g to describe something that's totally different that cannot be compared. It's only how we people in our small minds think, and the same thing even in Hebrew. They use Elohim, and then we say Elohim when referring to God, not in a liturgical sense not in a devotional sense, but the word Elohim, it, that could be Lashon Chol, if it's Kodesh or Chol, if it's holy, if it's sacred or secular, um, it's the same idea, it's used for angels, used for things that the other people worship. So, uh, and, and so that's what it means, God, he's far away from everything, I mean, there's no way to define God. I, I saw there's a book called the um, the History of God. I think it was by um, Karen Armstrong. She's a, a fantastic writer, Karen Armstrong. Don't agree with everything she writes, obviously, but she's a, a fantastic writer, and she actually uses the Shira Yichud. I believe in that book, The History of God. So where she quotes the Shira Yichud uh, in showing the Jewish theology. And... Oh, doing that thing again. So anyway, just got the oil changed. It seemed to help it a little bit. In any event... Uh, what she mentions is that something that's common through all of the theologies of the of the monotheistic world that believe that God is omnipotent and omniscient and omnipresent and transcendent and eminent at the same time. That was the word I was trying to remember for Rachok is transcendent. So, that meaning far away, but it's not far away in the sense of distance, because God is so close to us. God is, if He fills us, He surrounds us. There's not, you know, there's. And cravus can my cravus secha, like we said on the Thursday, that we'll read tomorrow uh, ourselves. We're not going to, not going to record it again, but you could look at the recording. Car, you know. And cravus come cravus There's no closeness like God's closeness. Like, like, like I said, you know, Groucho Marx said, "If I was any closer, I'd be behind you." You know, and that's. Uh, and again, I apologize for using such a crass reference. What a gift that God gave me that I can say that. So anyway. Oh, Hashem, things, things are exactly how God wants them to be. 
and the challenges that we and the fights that we're fighting, that's also what God wants. So anyway, Karev has that that God is both near and uh, he's both eminent and transcendent because uh, his transcendence is an expression of his nearness but what I was saying that Karen Armstrong brought up and other theologians have brought up is that it's it's impossible to define what God is we can only define really essentially what he is not right and so that's what we mean Rachak be called the transcendence of God is that he transcends any definition uh, Veskol Roya and he sees everything Mamish everything, literally everything. Ki Rom Hashem Because the Lord is exalted, but also sees that which is lowly. And uh, one of my favorite go to uh, pop culture references in a religious sense, and it's obviously expressed in a religious sense is there's a movie from 1957, Universal Pictures, one of the better science fiction movies of the 50s, was The Incredible Shrinking Man, right? Which is really an incredible movie. The, the title is almost silly compared to, you know, the original title of the book was simply The Shrinking Man. And I think that's a much better title than The Incredible Shrinking Man, but, you know, you put that incredible in there just to get more people to come, but really, it, in a way, it cheapens a really sublime film. And at the end of the movie, he has this sol soliloquy where he just keeps shrinking and shrinking and shrinking till he gets to the uh, cellular level and the molecular level, the atomic level, the subatomic level. And he wax, waxes philosophically about how he um, he says that there's a point where the infinite and the infinitesimal meet. I think that's where I learned the word infinitesimal as a child watching this film on AMC. You know, back when AMC still showed, showed old movies instead of new TV shows, right? I didn't even know what they showed on AMC. When AMC was more like TCM is now, right? And... where the infinite and the infinitesimal meet, where everything comes full circle. And he says, to God there is no zero. He says, I still exist. And, and I compare this to what we say in the Hallel, in the Psalm, uh, what is it, 113, 114, one of those Psalms. I think it's 113. Where it says, uh, it says, Mi Kashem Alokeinu, who is like unto the Lord our God, Hamag Mihi Lashavis. He is exalted to come down in resting. Hamashpili, he, he descends, he brings himself Bashamayim into the heavens of Aretz and to the earth, meaning the heavens, God transcends time. God transcends space. God, it's not like the Gary Larson cartoons where God is like Zeus on the cloud. God forbid. God transcends to, to enter into the realm that we call heaven is still, in a sense, lowering himself and certainly to the earth. And yet, uh, lowering not in the sense of ge geography, 
right? It's in the sense of how he created the world. He made the tzimtzum. He made the he, he the, that halal, right? Where he, according to the Kabbalists, say the imagery that the Kabbalists use is that God drew himself back, constricted his light in order to allow this world to exist and we could still have free will uh, but the uh, of course the, the, one of the famous theological arguments between the Hasidim and the Vilder Gon was that the, the, the Baal Shem Tov and the Tanya all the all the Hasidim said Tzimtzum Lav Kapshutai that this constriction of God's light is not literal it's not like in the simple meaning meaning to say that uh, that God fills all worlds surrounds all worlds there's no place empty of him this is not a, a, an original Hasidic thought however the way that the Pizetzner writes in his Mava Yasharim he explains that uh The Mekubalim, before the Hasidim, taught that th- that all of the world were Kalim Mole or Hashem. They were vessels filled with the light of God. But the Hasidim revealed, the Baal Shem Tov revealed, that the Dofne Akalim, this is the way that the Peace Etzner expresses himself, are themselves the Etzim or Hashem that the walls of the vessels are themselves the light of God. What does it mean? Maybe we should we should really learn the Mavai Sharm together. I don't know if it's here on, on the yeah, on the Safari. We, we should look at it. We should learn that whole Sefer together. It's a very important Sefer. A very fundamental Sefer. But the um, meaning as if to say there's a cup that's filled with water. The even and so the 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 Kabbalists would say that the, the water is the light of God, so to speak, and the cup is the world. But what the what the Hasidim revealed is that even Hasidic philosophy revealed is that even the cup itself is made of the water so to speak that they're made of the same material perhaps the cup is made of ice and the water inside the cup is liquid you could do such a thing right maybe that's how you want and, and but the thing is it's also in the you know I, I, we, we explained also what uh, Rabbi Asher Wade said the mistake of of Spinoza was Spinoza thought that, you know, all the that you know, the way Rabbi Wade, I remember he expressed himself to say that there's a sponge in the middle of the ocean and it's filled with water, right? So Spinoza only saw the sponge and the water inside the sponge, but he didn't realize there's a whole ocean around that sponge. It's much bigger than the sponge. Obviously, it's infinitely, when we in the parable and the nimshol. In any event. The, the, uh, that's what I was talking about from the incredible shrinking man that he recognized that he's just getting smaller and smaller and smaller and yet God is mashpili l'shavas mashpili l'shavas mashpili l'shavas mashpili l'shavas mashpili l'shavas that God comes down to see the heaven and the earth that that's the godless, that's the greatness of God. Because a, a great king is not the one who is aloof from 127 provinces. A great king, I mean, like we, we, we look at what's going on in the world today. With all due respect to my friend from Florida, I'm not going to mention him because I don't want to embarrass him. But when you look at the comparison between 
the very evil Mr. Putin sitting at the table with his advisors and it's 30 feet away between him and them, this big table. You know, he looks like Charlie Chaplin's a great dictator or something. I know Chaplin was a leftist. And then you see Zelensky sitting with army fatigues on with his fellow citizens eating with them, smiling with them, you know, not having any airs about him. Which one is greater? Which one is superior? Which one represents more greatness? Obviously, it's the, it's the, the archetype of Zelensky that he is representing himself as this, uh, did I lose it? Is it too late? 